Hello, and welcome to International Green IT Awareness Week. My name is Peter Karen, and I will be hosting today's web session on how to convert offices to use thin clients. This topic should be of interest to facilities management people, as well as system administrators, IT, and support personnel, do-it-yourself IT people, and also green IT advocates inside a company. My concentration will be on small to mid-sized businesses with offices between 20 and 100 end users. We'll touch briefly on servers as well, but our focus today will be primarily on reducing costs and energy consumption by using thin clients and thin hardware clients where appropriate. Also, where possible, I will try to use real-world examples mostly, but not exclusively based on open source software. Our priority will be to show you how you can hopefully save money, save work, and save energy. So, let's begin. Let's start by asking two questions. First, why are we considering green IT and a thin client solution? And what are our objectives? By answering these two questions, clearly and precisely, we should be able to answer a third question, that is, do we have a valid business case for thin clients? There can be any number of reasons why a company might want to implement a green IT strategy or convert offices to thin client hardware. But the most common reasons have to do with reducing costs and maximizing your return on investment. Improved IT support and reduced TCO per PC, as well as an effort to reduce the corporate carbon footprint, are also significant factors in choosing a thin client solution. Thin client computing, coupled with client virtualization, has the potential to reduce infrastructure costs, first by reducing your capex costs, second by significant energy savings. In addition, it's easy to streamline support costs and support efforts with virtualized or thin clients. Also, however, and not to be underestimated, thin client computing can be a useful marketing tool from the marketing department's ability to say our company is now green to certifications which improve the corporate image. In addition, improved productivity should never be underestimated. There's a reduced downtime and a reduced need for support people to travel to remote offices. In addition, there's the potential of better resistance to viruses and attacks, as well as faster startup times and fewer hardware failures translate into lower costs. Perhaps the single most oft asked question is, can I save money with thin client computing? And if so, where? Surprisingly, the savings are usually not in reduced capex costs, at least not in the first year. Energy savings, on the other hand, can account for a significant reduction in costs. Some recent estimates have concluded that workstations make up for as much as 90% of total business power use. As you can see from the graphs, a PC that's running 24 hours a day for 30 days a month consumes more than 250 euro a year in energy costs. That same PC running for 10 hours a day costs less than 100 euro a year. For thin client hardware, however, the costs are significantly reduced to below 100 in both cases, 50 for the thin client at 24 hours, and less than 25 euro a year for a thin client running 10 hours a day and 21 days a month. If one calculates then 20 terminals, the savings between PCs and thin client hardware can be significant. While companies can expect savings from reduced capex costs and energy costs, the real savings will most likely come from reduced support costs. These are due to optimized and centralized software distribution and management, as well as reducing risks from downtime due to viruses and other security hazards. In addition, the adoption of thin client hardware often reduces significantly the amount of time per PC that support is required to offer. In addition, support can concentrate more resources focused on business priorities and fewer on day-to-day -day maintenance. In addition, fewer hardware upgrade requirements and replacements, especially for hard disks, can contribute to significant savings. To help you determine if thin client computing is for you, the first thing you'll need to do is assess your current situation. Virtual computing and thin client computing is not for everyone. As with any project, you have to know where you are before you can decide where you need to go. So our suggestion is you define your metrics and measurements as precisely as possible. For example, take a close look at user profiles, those that require call center, data entry, email, calendaring, word processing, and spreadsheet capabilities are prime candidates for thin clients and desktop virtualization. In addition to trying to determine who is an eligible candidate for thin client and virtualization, 
you'll need to put numbers on things like how much electricity do you currently use, calculate how much a desktop deployment really costs your organization, not just the cost of the hardware, but the cost of the installation, the software that sits on the client, as well as support costs over the period of one, two, three, and more years. You shouldn't be surprised to learn that the initial hardware cost makes up a smaller percentage of the total cost of ownership of a PC than you might have thought. This is why I mentioned earlier that CapEx cost may not be where you realize your most significant savings. Other things to consider are the cost of electricity and does it change weekends, nights, daytimes, and don't forget to add in the costs of cooling, especially in warmer climates. The cost of cooling is especially important to consider if you're going to be virtualizing servers, as servers generate considerably more heat than PCs. Calculating energy use per PC and per server is best done using a meter. Don't try to calculate the watts used by your PC by looking at the label on the back of the computer which tells you how many watts. Typically a server might say 500 watts and a PC might say 350, but rarely do PCs and servers use the maximum wattage. The standard unit of measure of electrical power, of course, one watt is one ampere of current flowing at one volt. However, when discussing a PC, this rating is only equivalent to watts when it applies to devices that absorb all of the energy, such as electric heating coils or uh, perhaps an incandescent light bulb. With computer power supplies, the actual watt rating is only 60% to 70% of volt amps. Even then, it's just a best guess estimate. To get an accurate reading of how much energy you're actually using, a meter is the best way to measure. Next, try to determine what you really need. Do you need to virtualize an entire desktop for an end user or simply a couple of applications? Do I have the server horsepower currently or am I going to have to get new servers that are bigger, faster, cheaper and can easily handle the local fat thin client? Ask yourself if you can benefit from a golden desktop image and do you need to provide anything else to your user community? All of these questions concerning a potential virtualization of your thin client infrastructure To recap your checklist, it's important that you try to quantify your targets and expectations. Set the numbers of servers to be virtualized, the number of PCs that are possible to be virtualized, the users and departments who are potential candidates for virtualization and thin clients, the number of workstations, which are PCs, Macs, Linux boxes, which incidentally may serve dual objectives, as many Linux users are also power users and use their workstation as a server. Try to determine the number of support calls per month per PC and the cost per support call or per hour per support call. In addition, create a software inventory. What software actually sits on the desktop? Which versions? And can it be virtualized? CRM, accounting software, and other web browser-based apps are already running on remote servers. MS and OpenOffice are good candidates for virtualization, as are instant messaging software and mail clients. Skype, SIP, and software phones, as well as CAD programs, CPU intensive programs, Microsoft Visio, etc., are not likely candidates for virtualization or thin clients. As with any project, this is all about reducing risk, and basic project management principles apply. A poorly executed thin client transition strategy will fail, as will any poorly planned project. Again, to reduce the risks, in this case, consider these points. Start small. Try to find some willing employees, set up a test environment, and see what happens. Measure and document all changes. Above all, be flexible and don't forget your end users. Communicate your goals to everyone. Get buy-in from as many groups as is reasonable. Focus on one objective at a time, energy, capex, or support. To assure end user acceptance, try to identify the transitional pain. For example, do users demand persistent desktops or is speed and reliability the main concern? Incorporate feedback from all parties. That includes end users, sysadmins, help desk employees, marketing, and finance. Prepare phased rollouts and consider complaints and suggestions. And once again, monitor results. Until now in the stages. presentation, I've kept things pretty general. Now we'll try to get a bit more into the nuts and bolts of thin client computing. To begin, Let's try to define thin client computing. In general, we're talking about thin client hardware, thin client software, 
which may or may not be used in conjunction with virtualization. Many labels are commonly used interchangeably. Definitions will sort themselves out over time, but for now we can consider four general categories. First, zero clients. Zero clients are hardware clients that have very limited OS capabilities and connect to a server via a protocol like RDP, ICA, or something similar. Hardware manufacturers include NEC, WISE, and computing and others. Zero clients generally have non-configurable hardware. Next we have a category we can think of as a thin client. Generally this is a hardware client which has a full local OS but reduced hardware, often using solid state hard drives or flash drives. Application virtualization and embedded OS's go together in this category. Examples of hardware manufacturers include Linutop, Rangi, Wise. It is also possible to repurpose full clients sometimes with hard drives removed with a PXE boot, for example. This saves not only money, but can save energy using thin client software like Altio, Open Thin Client, or commercial providers which include Citrix, VMware, Graphon, and Microsoft application virtualization. In many cases, repurposed full clients offer a transitional phase, allowing the possibility of a smooth transition to thin client computing. In addition, there are often all-in-one Atom-based devices which offer more robust hardware, generally a local hard drive, but reduce energy costs significantly. Examples include Asus's Triple E PC and Triple E Top Series. The second building block in thin client computing is virtualization. While server virtualization is quite common now in many data centers with a proven track record of energy and cost savings, Thin client virtualization is a somewhat more recent addition to mainstream IT. For our purposes, there are three types of virtualization. First, application virtualization. Application virtualization aims to solve the problems of compatibility, deployment, and updates, as well as administration and desktop management. In this approach, programs actually execute on the client, but their configuration sits on the server. It is very easy in this instance to run the latest version of Microsoft Office 2010 on a Mac or Linux client. Second, we have desktop virtualization, VDI. All data and operating systems and applications will run as a virtual machine on a data center or locally based server, while users will access their personal VMs over a network connection. This increases security and can potentially reduce desktop management problems, especially if clients are using diskless or stateless terminals. A VDI solution also makes rollouts of new operating systems quite simple. Finally, PC virtualization on local blade servers or workstation blades. These are dedicated blade servers for each workstation. This is a viable option for centralizing support and management, but may not actually impact energy use as these servers require significant power. Application virtualization offers many possibilities to deliver applications from remote data centers or locally based servers. In our tests, we were able to use servers based in the U.S. and deliver Microsoft Office 2010 Word and Excel applications successfully and reliably to clients based in Germany. While vendor claims vary, we've found that you'll require a minimum of 40 kilobits per second to successfully deliver applications over a WAN. Application virtualization has many benefits, including the ability to run otherwise incompatible versions of software on the same terminal, seamless upgrades to the latest versions, on-demand software, easier license and access control. Also, virtualization at the application level can be beneficial for companies who have document control, versioning, and tracking requirements, as well as allowing end users to run a variety of OSs. Not all applications, however, are good candidates for virtualization. CPU, memory, and graphics intensive applications like CAD programs or Microsoft Visio are not generally good candidates for application virtualization. Generally, you should try to stay away from applications that require constant screen refreshes and screen redraws. In our own test, we found the commercial solutions of Citrix, VMware, and Graphon to be amongst the best performers. But beware, the cost of commercial solutions can be significant and sometimes beyond the reach of the budgets of many small companies. Desktop virtualization has proven to be a popular option for many support and IT groups. It is especially suited for call center and data entry personnel, as well as users who need to use a standard desktop and or need to move around within a building and access their desktop from anywhere. 
Desktop virtualization can run on a thin client or a zero client. The idea of desktop virtualization has been around a long time, but in the last several years, performance has improved to the point where it is perfectly usable under most circumstances. Based on our tests, we recommend that you use this inside a LAN only, as you would need a significant WAN or an accelerated WAN connection in order to achieve acceptable performance. In addition, you're required to have an always-on network connection, so standard DSL connections where you might lose the connection temporarily are usually not viable options. The desktop virtualization company Altio offers an open source desktop virtualization solution which works very well delivering Linux desktop and while it has a Windows option as well, we found the effort to configure Windows applications generally far more difficult than the commercial alternatives. Nevertheless, both Open Thin Client and Altio offer professional open source Thin Client. So who gets to use Thin Clients? Candidates for virtual desktops on zero clients could include light users, perhaps reception, or call centers, lockdown users, kiosks, and guest PCs. Candidates for virtual applications include power users, transitional personnel, remote users, as well as financial, legal, and medical workers who may be required by law to implement document tracking systems. Interestingly, even programmers can benefit from application virtualization. We've found running Eclipse on remote machines harnesses the power of the server and in most cases project build times were reduced significantly. Additional candidates for thin clients depending on your requirements are external and home office users who should be allowed access to only limited numbers. Of One of the biggest challenges of any virtualization strategy is where to place the servers. As you can see from this graphic, servers running in the same physical location as the clients can be used in an environment which makes use of zero clients, thin clients, or repurposed full PCs. When dealing with remote and branch offices, however, or servers sitting in an off-site data center or in the cloud, you'll need to test very carefully your strategy. In any case, at least to start, local shared storage is probably the best option. Workstation virtualization, on the other hand, requires that the servers are in the same physical location as the clients. The advantages of application virtualization include applications can use the processing power of local machines, central management of application and access control remains firmly in the hands of central IT management personnel, application virtualization further can be used as a transitional strategy when you're moving from one version of software to the next, in addition rollouts are simplified and multiple and perhaps incompatible versions of the software can be used simultaneously. The advantages of using VDI include centrally managed desktops, virtual desktop images which can be created and configured to meet time sensitive requirements, information can be secured by keeping the virtual desktop inside the data center, complex or sensitive applications can be encapsulated and isolated into specific PC VMs, and new operating system migrations will be much easier to perform because resources are only required centrally. Not In our first scenario, we were presented with a request for 350 plus business center PCs running kiosk software in 200 locations scattered throughout Europe. Supporting so many terminals with no local support presence was considered the biggest challenge. Additionally, though not required at the start, it was decided that there needed to be an option to install Microsoft Office in phase two of the project. The original design called for Windows PCs running Microsoft Office locally and using Provisio kiosk software. If you'll examine the graphs, you'll notice that the expected cost, CapEx plus licensing plus development, was over 600,000 euro, not counting travel, compared to just under 400,000 using a thin OS and hardware solution with Microsoft Office, or less than 200,000 using thin clients running OpenOffice. More significant, however, was the estimated difference in support costs. Our challenge was to reduce support costs and complexity. In our first scenario, we were presented with a request for 350 plus business center PCs running kiosk software in 200 locations scattered throughout Europe. Supporting so many terminals with no local support presence was considered the biggest challenge. Additionally, though not required at the start, it was decided that there needed to be an option to install Microsoft Office in Phase 2 of the project. 
The original design called for Windows PCs running Microsoft Office locally and using Provisio kiosk software. If you'll examine the graphs, you'll notice that the expected cost, CapEx plus licensing plus development, was over 600,000 euro, not counting travel, compared to just under 400,000 using a thin OS and hardware solution with Microsoft Office, or less than 200,000 using thin clients running OpenOffice. More significant, however, was the estimated difference in support costs. Our challenge was to reduce support costs and complexity. Our solution was to use thin clients in hotels. The thin clients contained a full OS running software of OpenOffice, Firefox, Skype, and an instant messenger. Application virtualization for Microsoft Office 2010 would be handled by either Graphon or Zenapp application servers. The advantage of this solution is that we could replace expensive and energy inefficient PCs with lightweight thin clients. The lightweight thin clients used 20 watts of power as opposed to 200. While the thin clients were slightly less expensive, we calculated the most dramatic savings in support costs because the thin clients have fewer moving parts. Because the thin clients were based on Linux, we were able to use centralized servers to distribute software, manage remote upgrades, and allow support staff to access all terminals remotely. In our next scenario, we were faced with a permanent staff of 50 in two locations. We determined that 40 of the users were candidates of virtualization. However, the hardware clients that were used were iMacs and Intel PCs. Applications included MS Office, Firefox, Skype, instant messaging, as well as several web-based applications. Ten users used CAD programs and were determined to be unlikely candidates for virtualization. In addition, there were five servers of various makes and models. Our challenge was to move people toward thinner clients and reduce server complexity. We opted for application virtualization and to retire and refresh as many servers as possible. In addition, we attempted to reuse as much existing hardware as possible so that we didn't have to purchase so many new machines. As you can hopefully see from this graph, there were 40 workstations all based at a single location and several departmental and file app servers. There was, additionally, an Exchange server and an SQL server. We decided that the best option would be to reuse one of the underutilized Linux servers as a hypervisor. Then we would run our virtualized Windows and Linux machines on top of that. At first there was some concern as to the performance of the SQL server. However, since both only supported 50 users, we were able to scale the hypervisor accordingly. While we started with IMAX and PCs, during a transitional phase we were able to phase out the older PCs, starting with the most energy inefficient ones first, and replace them with thin client PCs based on Linutop. The servers, a combination of Windows servers and OpenSUSE servers, were virtualized on top of Zen running on SUSE 11.2. By the end of the transition phase, 40 of the 50 clients will be thin client computers. Our final scenario was based on a much smaller scale. There were only 15 users in two locations, and the customer wanted to upgrade PCs in one of the locations, but wanted to avoid the expensive and energy inefficient option. In this case, one of the requirements was that all users would be running Microsoft Windows. Microsoft Office was heavily used and one user used the CAD program. In addition, there were three servers in the local server room. Our challenge was to streamline support processes and to reduce the customer's carbon footprint, as well as to centralize backups if possible. We opted for a desktop virtualization solution using n-computing thin clients. Because one of the servers had been recently purchased, we were able to virtualize the other two servers and add an additional virtual server for future growth. In the end computing solution, the two most powerful PCs were upgraded with an additional 4 gigs of RAM, allowing four workstations to run off of one PC and two off of the other. Each of the clients could, of course, use the second PC as an alternate server in case its primary PC was under repair. In this scenario, six PCs, which would have otherwise been using significant amounts of energy, were replaced with simple 12-watt devices, while server electricity use dropped by more than 50 percent. 
I hope you found this overview of thin client computing helpful. Thin client computing offers the promise of reduced environmental impact. It also offers the possibility to lower your company's carbon footprint by implementing sustainable energy policies. In addition, reduced management and administrative costs associated with remote infrastructures can be an added benefit. Lowered capital costs for future server purchases as well as client purchases accrued over three to five years can offer significant savings. And finally, the rationalization of operations to remove unnecessarily redundant processes and inefficient servers can reduce administration complexities as well as costs. Taken together, all of this adds up to a viable business case for thin client computing. However, it is important to take into consideration several warnings. Be careful to assess your situation and don't rush into a solution before the problem is fully understood. Get buy-in from all key stakeholders and gain agreement on the problem to be solved. Manage the scope of your project, start small, and build on your experience. Consider timing the move to coincide with updates and upgrades. On behalf of PC Consultants, we'd like to thank you for tuning into this presentation and enjoy the rest of Green IT Awareness Week. If you have any questions about what you've heard today, please feel free to contact us at support at pcconsultants.de.